the key to this working and you know clearly from minnesota's eyes um the thing that'll unlock this is anthony edwards Yo, 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 what is that, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of NBA Now. It's your boy, Dom, and we're gonna get right into things here today. So, today, 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 we are taking a look at the Minnesota Timberwolves, and in particular, Anthony Edwards, the former number one overall draft pick, um, obviously in a bit of a controversial draft where, you know, we saw him, we saw LaMelo, we saw James Wiseman all come out, um, but Anthony Edwards... He was taken number one. He was taken at the top. Um, and so far, he's had a very, very good career. When we look at, you know, his career stats, um, he's averaged 20 points per game, four rebounds, and three assists per game as well. Um, but then when we take a deep dive and look at this last year's stats, we see that he improved off his rookie year, going up to 21 points per game this last season. He averaged a steal and a half, half a block per game, almost four assists per game, and almost five rebounds per game. Um, while also improving his three-point percentage from 32% to almost 36%, and um, improving his overall field goal percentage from 41% to 44%. So, um, pretty much improvement across the board for Anthony Edwards in his sophomore season. And we're going to kind of talk about him a little bit more here in a minute. But one thing I do want to segue into is the Rudy Gobert trade. I haven't given my opinions on it on this channel. So I want to kind of quickly talk over how that's going to change this team as it was the biggest move of the offseason that we've seen so far. Obviously, um, the rumblings and the rumors of Kevin Durant will continue to hover over the league like a dark cloud. Um, but... The biggest move that we've seen isn't DeJounte Murray from the San Antonio Spurs to the Atlanta Hawks. It is Rudy Gobert being traded for Minnesota's house, backyard, children, babies, babysitter, everything under the moon that Minnesota had to offer. They went out, they got Rudy Gobert. Obviously, they still have an Anthony Edwards, Jade McDaniels, Car Anthony Towns, a plethora of guys, um, D'Lo. Um, but they did trade a lot of first round picks, which... Um, is a large reason why that Kevin Durant cloud continues to loom over the rest of the league, and that was for a multiple, multiple-time Defensive Player of the Year. Um, now, when we look at how Rudy Gobert is going to impact this team, obviously, um, I think, you know, as we've gotten a little bit further away from the initial trade happening, we've seen um, a little bit more of a concrete direction in which we see that the Timberwolves are going to look to go. They're going to look to play Cat, obviously, at the four play Gobert in the Jared Vanderbilt role of last year, where obviously Jared Vanderbilt was their best perimeter defender, um, but really he was also their best rim protector as well. And they're going to use Gobert's rim protection and um, help defense very prevalently um, in their defensive schemes and stuff like that. Now, the thing that worries me with that is how well Cat can continue to defend on the perimeter. Obviously, being a guy that's been, um, you know, he's, he's played perimeter defenses. Defense has improved throughout his career and everything like that. Um, and yeah, his shot blocking is something he struggles with a little bit um, with his interior defense. But how, you know, he's really going to need to slim down and push his head down on the defensive side of the ball and really make the effort to become a better perimeter defender for this to work i think um it is like the biggest lineup that we'll see pretty much since the anthony davis and the boogie cousins pairing in new orleans um obviously that duo potentially could have won a championship if they were healthy together um they were pretty much putting up 50 point games on back-to-back -back nights every single night and it was kind of unstoppable because they could both carry the ball they could both dunk the ball um obviously anthony davis was a defensive player of the year caliber player um and you know you saw such just a, a mismatch night in and night out against any other modern team um that i think minnesota is going to try and capitalize on now gobert is going to play a lot in the dunker spot on the offensive side of things whereas cat's going to kind of have that mobility to do more of what an anthony davis or a boogie cousins was able to do in their pairing which is kind of just kind of work all over the court whether it's from three whether it's in the post whether um it's in the pick and roll game you know high post whatever position he finds himself in he's going to be able to kind of capitalize on that um now spacing shouldn't be too much of an issue obviously current towns being one of the better shooters in the entire league um and still being you know a center power forward i guess we'll see him play this next season um so that shouldn't be too much of an issue 
Um, Edwards, I think we should see more improvement on his three-point shooting. And um, if we can see Jaden McDaniels continue to make strides as not only a perimeter defender, which I think will be very um, important for this team with, you know, the current construction of it, but also um, a three point shooter and stuff like that. Um, that should be good as well. Now, they did make some additions that, you know, recouped, obviously, the veterans that they gave away. Yeah, Patrick Beverly and Malik Beasley um, and Jared Vanderbilt were very big pieces for their team last season. Um, which, you know, made the playoffs for the first time since Jimmy Butler was there and, you know, ran the third stringers against the starters. Um, the infamous story before he ever went to uh, Philly and later to the Miami Heat. Um, but yeah, I mean, they were able to make a lot of strides last year. Obviously, they are losing a lot of locker room presence. Um, a lot of that comes from Patrick Beverly, um, who I think gets his overrate, gets his underrate um, by, you know, different critics of his game. Um... But, you know, that locker room presence is something to be of note. It's something where we saw this Minnesota Timberwolves team react different to it. This time, you know, obviously, Russell Westbrook, Jimmy Butler, Pat Bev, all these guys are very big motivators in the locker room. Pat Bev being by far the worst player of the three that I just named off. I want to make sure that I'm clear with that. Um, but that locker room presence, when we saw Jimmy Butler there, they had a very different response, reportedly, due to when they had Patrick Beverly there. So having that guy that they were able to kind of get behind is yeah he's not our best player but we agree with your mentality headed into the season headed into every single game to win those games and push themselves um to become a better team so i think that's going to be the biggest hurt of the guys they lost even with you know the phenomenal defense that um jared vanderbilt provides obviously being a nuggets fan I've known about him for quite a while um, at this point, and it's great to see him you know, get his money and kind of do things. I think he'll be very good for the Utah Jazz, um, so I think that's kind of underrated um, pick up there when you talk a lot about the loss that the Timberwolves had in getting rid of him, but that's going to be a big get for the Jazz, especially losing um, you know, the multiple-time defensive player of the year in Rudy Gobert. Um, and then you look at Malik Beasley, the spark, spark plug scorer off the bench. Um, started sometimes as well i definitely can see Jalen noel trying to step into that role a little bit more with some more opportunity and um yeah they should kind of be able to work around that again like i said they made some additions in the off season in bringing in like a kyle anderson and stuff like that to kind of try and supplement some of these roles which have been lost um and so i'm not worried that this team isn't at least going to be a playoff team i think um I think regular season wise they're going to play super super well how will the two bigs work in the playoffs is going to be super interesting but obviously what everybody's been talking about all off season is the key to this working and you know clearly from minnesota's eyes um the thing that'll unlock this is anthony edwards now when you look at the backcourt he'll obviously be playing more of a two this year last year he was more of a three um kind of a smaller three at that but you know with his um strength at the position with uh, you know his long arms and stuff like that he's able to kind of play defensively on the three and then obviously offensively you know we're in more and more of a positionless game so it didn't hurt them in any sense of the matter um playing him at the three a lot last year especially next to a bev and a, um d'angelo russell or a you know malik beasley out there whoever it was he obviously ended up at the three a lot last year um and so i think we'll see him move more back to his traditional position of playing the two, the shooting guard, the go get it um, scorer type thing, um, which isn't to say he didn't do that last year, um, but I think he'll just move further in that direction. And so he's kind of the big key, obviously, in pairing himself in the backcourt with D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell, I think, is going to work super, super well with Rudy Gobert in the pick and roll game. Um, D'Angelo Russell, I think, is one of the most underrated pick and roll players in the league. He operates it at a supreme level, um, regardless of the talent that he's working with. Working with, sorry. Um, whether it's a pick and pop situation with currently Towns or whether it's a pick and roll situation like we saw in Brooklyn with um, Jared Vander, not Jared Vanderbilt, Jared Allen Moore um, when he was able to become an all-star and lead them to the playoffs. Um, and so I think he'll kind of have both of that type of option with currently Towns with Rudy Gobert. And I expect this team to run um, a good amount of pick and roll through D'Angelo Russell and through Anthony Edwards as the primary ball handlers um just because i think you know having these two bigs you can create a lot of mismatches on the offensive end um and really open some of the dynamic scores that they have on the perimeter and so i think d'angelo russell is going to thrive with the two bigs it it comes down to like i said anthony edwards the key to the puzzle 
um, the guy that needs to break out. And a lot of people think that this guy could go and put himself in MVP conversations. Um, obviously, that's a huge jump to make going from a 21-22 point per game scorer you know being the second best player on your team obviously he gets more attention at this point than currently towns does you know currently towns a guy that um was constantly felt uh throughout the nba community to be underrated but you know anthony edwards just started in a big movie with adam sandler you know and, and obviously the big man bo cruz um uh juancho hernan gomez shout out to him obviously um played for my nuggets as well but um yeah i mean you know kermit he's gonna do his thing and he obviously um he's got that personality that the league pushes he's one of those guys that you can just gravitate to he's a hilarious interviewer um so, and so he's captivated fans of other organizations um in a way that cat never has and has kind of put himself as the face of the franchise even if currently towns has been there for six seven years now at this point um and like a lot of people have said wasted his career um for the most part sitting in minnesota similar to a kevin love or a um, Kevin Garnett to a you know much larger degree um, but yeah I think Anthony Edwards I definitely agree that he's the key to the puzzle what he can do this year is so 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 confusing because like I said I think D'Angelo Russell is going to thrive so well in the pick and roll game you'd want to get the ball to him obviously you want to develop Anthony Edwards as your primary scorer especially on the perimeter you go get a guy um, but you also just brought in two bigs and so you're going to have a little bit of spacing issues um potentially which i like i said i don't foresee there being spacing issues but if edwards three point percentage doesn't um stay where it was last year or continue to improve and a guy like mcdaniels or kyle anderson can't fill in as a um comparable three point shooter we could see this team start to kind of crunch in and allow defenses to kind of key in on their key guys um defensively and kind of take away some of what they want to do especially with anthony edwards being such a downhill guy um very similar to you know like a Jalen green um or a john morant you know these younger guys that they can fly they like to get to the basket they like to throw down the ball um and they like to kind of just put on a show you know what i mean um as part of their game it's not like they're necessarily going out there i don't want to put on a show but they're going out there and you know just getting to the hoop and dunking the ball or laying it up in a um, crafty way to get around a defender is just part of how they operate on the floor it's part of what makes them so good at what they do um and i think some of that could be taken away having gobert on the team so um i think initially edwards is going to struggle a little bit fitting in um with the new lineup like i said i think some of the other guys are going to fit a little bit easier gobert is a pretty easy fit um you're not expecting a ton of him offensively so offensively i don't think he'll have much of a production drop he'll still average like 12 to 14 off of um layups putbacks lobs you know simple stuff like that um obviously not going to do anything too creative on the offensive end but um by being a seven foot guy that you know can dunk the ball is very good defensively is going to sit in the dunker spot play a lot in the pick and roll um big screen setter it's going to you know kind of just rack up some points for him um almost passively if you were to look at it as like a passive income it's like a passive point um income and then like i think like i said um currently town should thrive in the offensive role especially you know when he gets smaller guys matched up on him playing the four or if a bigger guy gets matched on him and there's a small guy in rudy gobert um there will be pretty much mismatches on one of those guys 90 percent of the time just because other teams around the league aren't going to be running this you know big man rotation especially um as we continue to see teams push further and further into small ball um i think the farthest we've ever seen that go was obviously the russell westbrook houston rockets so you know teams have reeled it back a little bit since then um but definitely are still willing and able to go small um i think the clippers are a prime example of a team that likes to not have a center on the floor um even having a de decent one that um they have in zubac they prefer to just put a nick batum out there and say hey you five guys that are all six seven and can play defense on pretty much any position um yeah you're not gonna match up great against an all-time center or one of the best centers in the league whatever it is but you're gonna match up well enough that you know we're willing to just switch everything and play it that way um so when you see teams like that team that you know they could easily see pending health for both teams obviously um in the playoffs or in a play-in situation um in the regular season they'll definitely see it um obviously more in the playoffs but 
I think that easier transition will be for the bigs, um, as they're going to pretty much always have somebody to take advantage of. That requires Rudy Gobert taking advantage of the smaller guy, um, but you know, in a layup situation, we can get at the bottom close to the basket. There's not much a 6'4", six, six, even a 6'7 guy can do. If Rudy Gobert just puts the ball up and lays it in um, after quickly getting a catch and you know, a pick and roll or something like that. Um, and that's why I think Edwards is really going to need to work um, on his shooting this offseason, on his playmaking, um, and um, really kind of key in on using the other guys in the court around him to help himself more. We've seen him be such a good, you know, isolation scorer and everything like that. I think um, the big thing that, you know, could push him into that MVP conversation, I mean, if we're looking at year's end and Anthony Edwards is in the conversation for MVP, a big reason would be if he can utilize his teammates in a facet that um, helps him the most, right? Um, so I think some of those weaker parts of his offensive game he's really going to need to work on this offseason and um, lean into heading into next season. Now, I think throughout the season, definitely expect him to um, jump forward as this team's leading scorer with there being two big men. Um, it, like I said, initially, it's going to create a lot of opportunity for Carmenthy Towns headed down the stretch. We could see teams try and figure that out a little bit more. And you're going to become more and more reliant on your perimeter guys. Um, Anthony Edwards being your number one in that category will only help him down the stretch, I think. But I think initially it could be a little bit of a rough a rough fit for him, um, mostly because, you know, D'Angelo Russell is so well operated in the pick and roll game. Um, I don't, you know, expect him to worry about it too much. Um, so, yeah, it's really boom or bust um, for Anthony Edwards. Not in a sense of like, oh, he's going to be awful or something like that for the bust scenario there. Um, but more of like, this guy could pop off and average 33 points per game, um, be a top perimeter defender in the league, lead the Timberwolves to a top four seed in the league, and easily put himself in the MVP conversation. Or this guy could pretty much do what he did last year, struggle to fit in with the um, different formation of the team, not take that third year jump that a lot of people are expecting him to take um and kind of stay in a little bit of a limbo stage for a year not saying that he isn't going to be a superstar in this league because i'm going to it um but if it isn't this year you know i don't think it's any sign to worry um which i think a lot of fans potentially will um and i think timberwolves fans or more timberwolves front office could potentially get a little bit scared if he doesn't have a huge year this year um, so I think what they did is obviously a short-term goal. You want to compete with Rudy Gobert and everything like that. You want to try this, um, Twin Towers thing, but I would at least give it a two-year thing. Um, now I don't even know if Gobert would be tradable after that, just with the levels that his contract's going to get to. And obviously the meme of, oh, well, if it doesn't work, just trade Carmenthy Towns or whatever is hilarious. That's just not how the NBA operates. You don't just, oh, trade this for picks. Or trade all your picks for this, and then it doesn't work. Trade this guy for picks, and keep it moving like that. Like, yeah, you can make those jokes and everything, like OKC and everything. Um, but at the end of the day, every team wants to win championship. And when you get star young players, you don't just keep spinning them through the door and going with one year trials. Um, I think sticking through this for one to two years, making sure that the coach that they have now, who has done a very good job since being hired there, is the right coach to work with this group to push them as far as possible, um, is something definitely very important to key in on this year. And then making sure that Edwards is able to take that jump while still um, being able to contribute his most that he can to the other guys. Because, you know, D'Angelo Russell is an all-star caliber player. Currently, Towns is a superstar in this league. And then uh, Rudy Gobert is one of the de best defensive players of this generation. So Anthony Edwards being the guy that has the most potential out of all of them is kind of crazy to think about. But he is going to need to, because he is the most awkward fit, I think, um, arguable with Rudy Gobert in the sense. Um, but I think, like I said, Rudy Gobert's a pretty simple enough fit um, offensively. And we obviously know what he brings on the defensive side of the ball that it makes in my opinion, out of those four guys, the big four, whatever, of Minnesota, um, Edwards, the, you know, toughest fit to guy, toughest guy to kind of fit into the equation. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what he can do. I think, like I said, I would lean more into the side of him averaging 26 to 27, making the all-star team. Um, I think this team could definitely be top of the Western Conference. Um, the regular season success that we saw the Utah Jazz have with Rudy Gobert, definitely you have to keep in mind, along with what this team did last year, um, some of the youth that's just going to be able to get some run during the 
regular season to kind of fill in some minutes and stuff like that. And then the way that we've seen some of these players on this team operate with um, lesser guys around them, right? Rudy Gobert was able to win Defensive Player of the Year with bad perimeter defenders around him. Um, Carthy Towns was able to become one of the best offensive bigs in all basketball with just bad players around him. Um, D'Angelo Russell was able to become an all-star and lead a team to a playoffs and win games in the playoffs against Joel Embiid with a mediocre supporting cast. You know what I mean? So we've seen these guys. I mean, Anthony Edwards, he was able to go to Georgia and get it up against some teams, right, in college and then continue his momentum straight into the NBA after being the number one overall pick. So we've seen these guys and they have to work with lesser talent. And now that, you know, Rudy Gobert has some better perimeter defenders, Kyle Anderson, Jane McDaniels, Anthony Edwards, um, that should help out with his stuff. Um, obviously, Carnethy Towns has much better players around him now than he's had pretty much in his whole career. Um, when you look at Anthony Edwards, obviously, all the opportunity in the world while still having a very good supporting cast. And then you look at DeAndre Russell, he can do what he does. Um, he's with his friend in Carnethy Towns. He, I mean... D'Angelo Russell's in probably the perfect position for himself because he's never going to get traded from this team. He's able to work exactly how his game works, um, and he doesn't have pretty much any pressure on him because anything he provides is a bonus to what they have already there. Um, and so when you look at that situation for all these guys, it's really just up to them making it work, and they absolutely can. Um, so if I had to make a prediction, I would say Minnesota is definitely a 50 to... 60 win team um and if they win 60 i think it would be like on the dot or 61 i don't think it would be high 60s or anything like that um but they definitely have the regular you know the regular season talent um to really exceed in that category and then when it comes to playoffs i'm i'm a little bit nervous um for the you know the two big men set um i think always having one of the best big men on the court on the floor is going to be very beneficial especially like i said during the regular season because if you're staggering minutes and still playing cat at center a lot of the times um then that's only going to help you and in those minutes where cats off the floor and gobert's on the floor and gobert's off the floor and cats off the or cats on the floor um you're going to just see so much different stuff that you can throw at opposing defenses um which is very good to have during the regular season how well it will work during the postseason i think is the biggest question um but yeah anthony edwards is the key to this team anthony edwards can unlock um something different for this team and if he takes the jump that some people think that he's going to take yeah uh this team some contending conversations because they are up there with some of the best talent in the league um they have some depth on their roster as well um you know guys like torian prince guys like Kyle anderson and stuff like that that um they can fill in minutes they can score stuff for you they can those are you know when you look at championship teams they have guys like that right you look at the warriors auto porter juniors of the world um yeah auto porter ended up starting in the nba finals but he didn't start all year long and stuff like that and having guys like that that are able to fill in have their you know defined roles the nba is a game in a league full of finding your role and doing the best that you can at it whether it's a star player or whether it's a patrick beverly chirping in the locker room and helping your team out that way or whether it's um, being a top defender in the league like a Rudy Gobert, right? So everybody has their defined roles and I think um, should be able to play well off each other. Um, expect this team probably to start out around 500 though for the first 10 games of the season um, and then kind of start to get into a groove and kind of ramp it up. Um, I would like to plug real quick towards the end of the video here. I did make a video last season, um, kind of more mid-season, talking about how I thought that the Timberwolves were finally going to make a playoff appearance. Nobody seemed to want to watch it, but everybody was surprised when the Timberwolves made the playoffs. So, not going to say I called it, not going to say I didn't. The evidence is there um, to make your own opinion on it. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll link that video down below. Um, subscribe for more. I appreciate all the support on the channel recently after um, recently hitting 100 subs. So I appreciate that, like I said, again. And uh, yeah, let's keep it moving. And uh, yeah, let's see what the Timberwolves can do this season. It's been your boy Dom, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace out, guys.